Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, August 28th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap the MLB games that played yesterday and look ahead to today's games. The NBA and the NHL are both coming back on Saturday, so we'll preview and pick those games. As well, we'll go over the current leaderboard at the BMW Championship. We'll pick the NASCAR races for this weekend. I'll do my MLB trade deadline predictions. And my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with baseball. The only teams that played yesterday were the teams that um, took off on Wednesday and had doubleheaders. Game one doubleheader, Padres over the Mariners 10-7. to That's a crazy score for a seven-inning doubleheader game. San Diego 19-13, Seattle 12-20. Getting the win, Pierce Johnson 3-1. The loss, Taylor Williams, 0-1, his first blown save of the season. By the way, um, Seattle was up 7-3 going into the bottom of the ninth. And then the Padres scored 7 to have a walk-off. The Padres have the feel of um, a magical season, by the way. They had a walk-off homer by Will Myers. And the other homers in this game were... By Jose Marmoljos, who is pinch hitting for Evan White. Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis Jr., Machado again. And in the walk-off by Myers. Danielson, Lament, five innings, five hits, three runs, rocks, six strikeouts, ERA 2.35. Starting for the Padres, or I'm sorry, for the Mariners was LJ Newsome, four innings, three hits, and a run, no walks, four strikeouts, ERA 2.57. Pirates over the Cardinals 4-3 to in eight innings. So that's, I think, the first extra innings game of a doubleheader this season. Chris Stratton, the win, 2-0. John Gant, the loss, 0-2. And Rich Rodriguez, the save, his second. Home run by Yadier Molino is the only home run in this game. And that was for the Cardinals, obviously. Chad Cole, six innings, four hits, and a run, four outs, and a strikeout, ERA 2.52. Getting the start for the Cardinals was Kawan Hyung Kim, Six innings, three hits, no one runs a walk, and three strikeouts. You're a 1.08. Dodgers over the Giants, 7 0 in game one of the doubleheader. Dodgers 23 9, San Francisco 15 and 17. Clayton Kershaw, the win, 4 0. Logan Webb, the loss, 2 and 3. The lone home run in this game was by A.J. Pollock. Kershaw, six innings, four hits, no runs, no walks, four strikeouts. You're a 1.8. He looked like the Clayton Kershaw of old. Logan Webb, three and two thirds, four hits, five runs, two walks, four strikeouts. You're a 4.35. Reds over the Brewers, 6 to 1 in game one of the doubleheader. The Reds are 12 and 17, Milwaukee 13 and 16, Sonny Gray the win 5 and 1, Adrian Hauser lost 1 and 3. Home runs Nick Castellanos, Jesse Winker, Jesse Winker again and Omar Navarez. Sonny Gray 5 innings for its no runs, 2 walks, 4 strikeouts, rate of 1.94. Adrian Hauser 4 innings, 9 hits, 4 runs and walk and 3 strikeouts, rate 4.36. Mariners over to Padres 8 to 3 and the second of the two doubleheader games, Seattle 13 and 20, San Diego 19 and 14. You say Kikuchi to win one and two. Garrett Richards lost one and two. Home runs in this game. Jose Marmoljos again. Shed Long Jr. Manny Machado. You say Kikuchi five innings, seven and three runs, no walks, six strikeouts, series six point one two. That was his best start of the season. Garrett Richards two thirds of an inning, four at six on runs, two walks, and a strikeout or no strikeouts. Series five point one seven. That was his worst start of the year easily. Pirates over to Cardinals 2 0 to sweep the doubleheader. Pittsburgh 9 19, St. Louis 11 11. Getting the win, Cody Ponte's 1 1. The loss, Johan Oviedo 0 1. And getting the save for Pittsburgh, Nick Turley. No home runs in this game. Ponce 5 2 thirds, 5 hits, no runs, 2 walks, 2 strikeouts, the array of 2. Oviedo 5 innings, 4 hits, 2 runs, 2 walks, and a strikeout, the array 3.6. Dodgers over to Giants 2 0 in the second game of the doubleheader. Dodgers 24 9. San Francisco 15 18. Getting the win, Victor Gonzalez 2 0. The loss, Kevin Gossman 1 2. Kenley Jansen is 8th save of the season. And the lone home run in this game was by Jock Peterson. Caleb Ferguson was the opener. Um, a scoreless first inning with no walks or strikeouts or hits. And Gonzalez in relief, two and a third, no hits, no runs, no walks, three strikeouts, you're a 1.23. Starting for San Francisco, Kevin Gossman, he was solid. 
Four and two thirds rates, two runs, two walks, six strikeouts, a 4.54. Probably his last start as a member of the San Francisco Giants. Reds over the Brewers, 6 0 in game two of a doubleheader. Reds 13 and 17, Milwaukee 13 and 17. Getting the win for Cincinnati, Lucas Sims, he's 2 0. Josh Lindbaum lost 1 and 2. Home runs, just um, Eugenio Suarez in the top of the seventh. Wade Miley started four innings, a hit, no runs, a walk, three strikeouts, very 6.57. That was his best start of the year. Lindbaum, four innings, three hits, two runs, a walk, four strikeouts, very 6.31. Rockies, Diamondbacks, postpone, make update TBD. A's, Rangers, postpone, make update September 12th. Red Sox, Blue Jays, postpone, make update TBD. Phillies, Nationals, make update September 22nd. Orioles, Rays, TBD. Twin Tigers is being made up. In just a short few minutes here, Mets Marlins is uh, TBD as well. Um, today's games one ten doubleheader game one Tigers Twins, um, Randy Dobnak and Matt Boyd Dobnak five and one one point seven eighty ERA whip of one point oh two Boyd zero and four with an eight point four eighty ERA one point seven four whip. Four o'clock doubleheader game one Mets Yankees. This is makeup from the Mets COVID situation from last week. Michael Walkham against Jordan Montgomery. Walker 1 and 2 with the 6.43 ERA, whip of 1.64. Montgomery 2 on the 4.66 ERA, whip of 1.09. Twins Tigers game 2. We don't know who's going for Minnesota, and Tariq Skubal is going for Detroit. Owen with the 10.38 ERA, whip of 2.77. 6.30 Orioles Blue Jays. John Means and Hyunjin Ryu. Means 0 and 2 with the 10.13 ERA, whip of 1.31. Ryu 2 and 1 with the 3.19 ERA, whip of 1.0. Oh three. Seven o'clock game two, Yankees Mets. And by the way, these um doubleheaders are going on at Yankee Stadium. Um no starting pitchers announced yet in that one. Um Braves Phillies, Robbie Erlin and Zach Wheeler. Erlin, no decisions, five point one four ERA, whip of one point oh seven. Wheeler three note the two point seven six ERA, whip of one point one. Cubs Reds, that's a big one. Um Kyle Hendricks and Tyler Maley. Hendricks 3 and 3 with the 3.55 ERA whip of 1. Maley Owen won the 4.41 ERA whip of 1.35. Rays Marlins on Fox Sports 1. Ryan Yarbrough and Sixto Sanchez. Yarbrough Owen 2 the 4.45 ERA whip of 1.32. Sixto Sanchez 1 and 0 5.4 ERA whip of 1.2. You know what? I'm going to pick the upset here. I'm going to go with the Marlins. Um, I think that Sixto Sanchez is very good. Um, he made a good first impression. His first time out granted his ERA is not good. Um... I think that um, he is somebody that is going to be around for a long time. Um, I don't love the Rays' offense all that much. They did make the trade for Brett Phillips the other day, um, sending a uh, shortstop prospect over to the Royals. He's just a bench piece for them, in my opinion. He's like another platoony kind of bench, like um, Manuel Margo. So um, I think that their starting outfield this season obviously should be um, Austin Meadows, Hunter Renfro, and um, Kevin Kiermeyer. Although if one of those two guys starts to hit, then they could replace Kiermeyer or even Renfro because um, Renfro really has not lived up to expectations for the Rays. But um, I like the Marlins here. I think that um, Sixto Sanchez will pitch while they're home and um, – I think that um, they want to prove to everybody that, hey, you're, we're better than you think. So give me the Marlins here to uh, get a big win here. 7.30, Nats, Red Sox. Max Scherzer and Chris Mazza. Scherzer 2 and 1 to 4.31 ERA, whip of 1.4. Mazza 0 and 1 to 6.35 ERA, whip of 2.12. 8 o'clock, Dodgers, Rangers. Dustin May, Mike Miner. May 1 and 1 with a 2.79 ERA, whip of 1.17. Minor 0 and 5 with a 6.75 ERA, whip of 1.4. Um, Royals White Sox. Danny Duffy and Reynaldo Lopez. Duffy 2 and 2 with a 3.99 ERA, whip of 0.99. He's been awesome this season. Lopez has not. 0 and 1 with a 13.5 ERA, whip of 2. Pirates Brewers. Derek Holland and Corbin Burns. Holland 1-1 with the 6.17 ERA, whip of 1.41. This is probably his trade audition. Burns, no decisions, 3.42 ERA, whip of 1.18. Yeah. And now it says that this game's on Fox Sports 1, Indians Cardinals, so I guess it varies by location. Um, 
this is the better game of the two, so it should be on Fox Sports 1. No offense to the Rays and the Marlins. That's an insane rivalry, but these two teams are obviously um, contenders. Um, Tristan McKenzie and Daniel Ponce de Leon. McKenzie, one to know the 1.5 ERA, whip of 0.5. Ponce de Leon, 0 and 2 with a 5.25 ERA, whip of 1.5. Um, I'm going with the Indians here. Um, they're better. I love Tristan McKenzie. I was the one screaming that he's untouchable. Um, his prospect status declined over the last year or so, but I think he's going to go out and prove that he was worth that top prospect ranking a couple years ago. I think the Indians win this game, and um, it's funny. The Indians are winning, and they're probably going to be trading some pitchers, or likely to be trading some pitchers, but we'll see. So give me Tristan McKenzie in the Cleveland Indians here. Or maybe McKenzie's auditioning for a trade. Maybe they go the other way and acquire a bat. Or maybe they use those pitchers that they're talking about in trades like Bellinger or Bellinger, um, Clevenger, and um, and wind up using them as pieces to get a bat. But you never know. Um, A40 Padres, Rockies, Zach Davies and Kyle Freeland. Nice pitching matchup here. Davies four and two with three point oh three ERA, whip of point eight four. Freeland two and one with two point eight seven ERA, whip of one point one two. Nine A's Astros. Chris Bassett, Lance McCullers, Jr. Bassett, 2 1, 2.97 ERA, whip of 1.08. McCullers, 2 2, 5.74 ERA, whip of 1.31. Houston returning after the devastating uh, hurricane of um, obviously Hurricane Laura. Um, 9 30, Giants, Diamondbacks, Tyler Anderson and Zach Gallen. Anderson, 1 1, the 3.45 ERA, whip of 1.21. Gallen, no decisions, 2.25 ERA, whip of 1.06. Mariners, Angels. Nick Marvicius against Andrew Heaney. Marvicius, 1-1 one one with a 4.12 ERA, whip of 1.02. Heaney, 1-2 with a 5.52 ERA, whip of 1.36. And then Saturday, um, 1 o'clock, Mets-Yankees. Um, we don't know who's going for the Mets. Jay Hap's going for the Yanks. Um, one fifteen on Fox, Braves-Phillies, Josh Tomlin, Zach Eflin. Indians-Cardinals is on Fox as well, but... Unfortunately, that's not going to be um, the um, the game that's on here. That's probably going to be Braves-Phillies, although Braves-Phillies is a good game too, but Indians-Cardinals is more enticing. Carlos Carrasco and Jack Flaherty. Fox Sports 1, Royals-White Sox, Brady Singer and Dylan Cease. Uh, in terms of picks, um, Braves-Phils, I'm going to go with the Braves on the road. Um, they've been the best team in the division, even without Mike Soroka. Um, Indians Cardinals, um, I'm going to go with St. Louis with Jack Flaherty on the bump. And then Royals White Sox on Fox Sports 1, Brady Singer, Dylan Cease. I'm going with the Sox. Um, Dylan Cease has been their breakout pitcher this season. He's been this year's Giolito, if you ask me, although Giolito has been good too. He just threw the no-hitter. Um, so give me Dylan Cease and the White Sox to get the win there. Um, Four o'clock doubleheader: Cubs, Reds. You Darvish, Trevor Bauer. I guess that's makeup from COVID. Um, Twins, Tigers at six o'clock. Kenta Maeda, Casey Mize. I would consider betting on the Tigers in that game because Casey Mize, I think, is due for a uh, signature performance. Like I made the case for uh, um, Sixto Sanchez for tonight. Rays, Marlins. Um, Josh Fleming and Humberto Mejia. Orioles, Blue Jays. Alex Cobb and Tanner Rorick. 7 o'clock Dodgers, Rangers. Ross Stripling, Lance Lynn. I bet on the Rangers in that game if they end up being a dog. Um, and that could be Lance Lynn's last start as a Ranger. A's Astros, Frankie Montas and Zach Greinke. Pirates Brewers, JT Brubaker and Brett Anderson. 7.30 Nats Red Sox, Annabelle Sanchez and Martin Perez. Cubs Reds, we don't know who's starting yet in that game. It's game two of a doubleheader. Giants, Diamondbacks, Trevor Cahill, and Luke Weaver. Padres, Rockies, Adrian Morjan and Antonio Senzatella. And 940, Angels hosting the Mariners, Justice Sheffield and Griffin Canning. Sunday, doubleheader game one, Mets-Yankees. We don't know who's going for the Mets, and Garrett Cole is going for the Yankees. And I guess he's going on short rest because... A, the Yankees are shorthanded in their rotation right now, and B, that was a doubleheader game, and he didn't, um, although he wasn't good in that game against the Braves, he gave up a couple home runs, but um, the benefit is that he didn't um, he didn't pitch that many innings, so uh, 
He's gone on short rest against the Mets, and who knows, maybe the Yanks are desperate at that point. We'll see. But if the Yanks say they win the first three games, then maybe I wouldn't go with Garrett Cole. But that's just me. Um, we don't know who's going for the Mets yet. Um, Cubs, Reds, Alec Mills, Luis Castillo, Twins, Tigers, Rich Hill, Spencer Turnbull, Rays, Marlins, Blake Snell, Pablo Lopez, 130, Nats, Red Sox, Austin Voth, and Nathan Navaldi. That's a bet the over game. Could be Navaldi's last start as a sock. 2 o'clock, Red Sox, or I'm sorry, Royals, White Sox. Chris Bubik, and we don't know who's going for the White Sox yet. A's Astros, Jesus Luzardo and Fomber Valdez. Pirates, Brewers, Stephen Brault and Brandon Woodruff. Indians, Cardinals at 215, Aaron Savali and Adam Wainwright. That can be an underplay for me. Dodgers, Rangers at 230, Tony Gonsolin and Kyle Gibson. That could be an overplay for me. 3 o'clock, Orioles, Blue Jays, Tommy Malone, Chase Anderson. Um, Padres, Rockies, Chris Paddock and Ryan Castellini. 4 o'clock on ESPN2, the Giants and the Diamondbacks. Johnny Cueto and Alex Young. Um, it says the two games are on ESPN2. I guess it's a uh, pick-your-poison kind of game, like a regional game. If it's this game, I'll go with... This is probably Cueto's last start as a Giant. I'll go with San Francisco, audition for a trade. Maybe he's dealt, maybe he's not. You'll see in my predictions. So um, give me the Giants on the road there. And then Yanks-Mets game two. We don't know who's pitching in that game. I'm going to say the Yankees win that game um, because what we know is that Jacob DeGrom's not pitching for the Mets. So um, give me the Yankees. Um, I just don't trust the Mets bullpen at all. I think that's an over game. I think a lot of Met-Yankee games will go over in this series. I bet a lot of these overs in that series considering how bad the Mets bullpen is and the mediocre starters are thrown out. Michael Waka, who... um, Hasn't been what they thought. And potentially Rick Porcello in the series, too. Mariners, Angels, um, J- Justin Dunn and Dylan Bundy. And 7 o'clock ESPN, the Braves and the Phillies. Um, good Sunday night game. This was Sunday night baseball last week, too. We don't know who's going for Atlanta. And then Jake Arrieta's going for Philly. Um, oh, just breaking... Uh, the second starter for the Mets tonight against the Yanks is uh, David Peterson. So he's good. I'd consider betting the Mets game two against the Yanks because David Peterson's promising. But back to this game, Braves-Phils. Um, I'm going to go with the Phils at home. Um, we don't know who's going for the Braves yet. The Phillies need these games if they want to uh, continue to uh, be in the race. Um, they clearly are going for it with the additions of Heath Hembree and Brandon Workman. So give me the fills at home on Sunday Night Baseball against the Atlanta Braves. Now we'll go over um, the NBA playoff games for the weekend as they are um, restarting on Saturday. It was just um, announced now officially, but it was rumored. But it looks like that um, it's all coming back on um on Saturday, so the games that um, were supposed to be on Thursday are being played Saturday, and the games that were supposed to be Wednesday are being moved to Sunday. So um, that's that. So um, Saturday at um, four o'clock on TNT, you have the Raptors and the Celtics. Um, I have Toronto as a four and a half point favorite over under two thirty and a half. Um, here it says Toronto by two. I am going to lay it with the Raptors. Um, no Gordon Hayward for Boston. I think that's a concern. Um, the Raptors have been the best team in the in the bubble so far. So give me the Raptors in game one. Utah Denver. I have Denver minus two over under two twenty seven. This has Utah by two and a half. Apparently, Gary Harris is coming back, but I don't factor that again. It's the spread that much. Gary Harris has not been good this year. Um, give me Denver getting the points. I think they went out right and force a game seven. Dallas and the Clippers. I have Dallas getting four and a half over under 246. This is game six in that series. Um, it says the Clips are favored by nine. 
But if Kristaps Porzingis is out, I make it seven, and then I just a total a little bit. Um, I'll take the nine right now for Dallas. I don't think they'll win, but I think Kristaps Porzingis is coming back. So um, even if Kristaps Porzingis comes back, like I said, I think he's worth two and a half, and I'd make it seven without Porzingis. So even without Porzingis, I have a two-point edge on Dallas. So give me the Mavs plus nine. I think that Luka will keep him in it, but ultimately the Clippers will close it out on Saturday against Dallas. Sunday, Magic Bucks, Game 5. This was the game that obviously would trigger the sports world to um, protest against the unrest that's going on in our country. Um, I have Milwaukee by 14 over under 221.5. Um, I have no line in front of me. If I'm going to say that Milwaukee closes out, OKC Houston, I have as a pick 'em, 225 and a half total. Russell Westbrook coming back. Um, this obviously changes how I feel about the series. Um, I think the Rockets I saw maybe by four. I take the Thunder getting the points just because, but whatever the over is, I'm taking that. If it is somewhere like, if the total is somewhere near like 227. I jump on the over. So my play in this game will probably be the over if it's if it lands somewhere um, beneath 229 and a half. Um, and at Portland, the Lakers, I have the Lakers by 13 and a half over under 218. Um, Lakers are going to close them out. No Lillard. They're going to win by 20. So um, there you have it. Um, I'll tweet out my picks, obviously, for the games on Sunday on Sunday at some point, and same with tomorrow for my official picks. But Saturday's picks, you heard how I feel. Um, I'm going all against the spread for Saturday. I don't have the totals in front of me because I do have edges on um, on these spreads. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm taking Toronto minus the two, Denver getting the two and a half, and Dallas getting the nine, being competitive. But the Clippers, I think, will win the game. All righty, now we'll switch over to the NHL. Um, they will be resuming play on Saturday as well. Um, they made that announcement this morning. So um, we'll look ahead to that schedule. So Saturday, um, three games, um, 12 o'clock NBC, Lightning Bruins, um, game four. Um Let's see if the lines are up. I sure as hell hope so. So I can make picks. Um, where's the NHL? Yep, NHL lines are up, but not NBA. So we have this to play with. Um, Tampa's minus 110. Boston's minus 105. I'm going to take the Bruins to even this up at one apiece. They should be even, in my opinion. But there are a slight dog, so I grab the Bruins right now at minus 105 against the Lightning, even this up at two apiece. 7 o'clock NBCSN, Flyers, Islanders. Um, Islanders, slim favorites, minus 113. Flyers are minus 103. Um, I'm going to take the slight dog here at the Flyers. They're better in goal. I think Car Car uh, Carter Hart is due for a bounce back. A um, couple days off to rest a little bit. Um, so, give me the Flyers here um, as a short dog against the Islanders to go up 2 1 in the series. And then 9.45 on NBCSN Saturday night, you got the Vegas Golden Knights and the Vancouver Canucks. Vegas is a huge minus 200 favorite. Vancouver plus 170. Um, I think Vegas bounces back from that disappointing game two and gets the win here in what I think will be a competitive game. Sunday. 6 o'clock, NBCSN, the Avs and the Stars. Um, we have a line for this game, Colorado's minus 135. I think they even up the series at two apiece. Um, they looked um, relentless in their game on Wednesday night against Dallas after Dallas came back and tied it. I think they even this up at two apiece, although I really like how the Stars have been playing. I would bet the over in this game if it's anywhere beneath six and a half or six. 
Um, Sunday night NBC, Flyers Islanders. Good on um, those two teams getting the primetime matchup. I'm going to go with the Islanders here. Um, just even it up into a piece. So I think Flyers Islanders will split the next two games. I'm going to say the Flyers win tomorrow. And I'm going to say the Islanders win on Sunday night in primetime on the big NBC. And at 10 o'clock on NBC, I said Golden Knights Canucks. Um, back to back. Um, back to backs are not very fun. Um, sometimes the other team responds on the second of a back to back. And I think this is what's going to happen here. I think Vancouver evens it up at two apiece on Sunday night. So I think Golden Knights and Vancouver will split. I think Vegas wins tomorrow, and I'm going to say Vancouver wins on Sunday. Now we'll move on to golf. We'll look at the current leaderboard at the um, BMW Championship, um, which has been an interesting tournament thus far, to say the least. Um, And currently in the top spot right now with the score of three under, Tyler Duncan tied with Mackenzie, or I'm sorry, not Mackenzie Hughes, Hideki Matsuyama, who's um, teeing this hour. Um, Mackenzie Hughes in third at two under. Um, even Henry Higgs, Tony Finau, Sebastian Munoz, Billy Horschel, Lonto Griffin, Matt Fitzpatrick, Carlos Ortiz, Rory McIlroy, Patrick Cantlay, Tom Hogue, Abraham Answer. Tied for 15th with one over. Ryan Palmer, Dustin Johnson, Mark Hubbard, Victor Hovland, and Jim Herman. Tied for 20th with two over. Brendan Steele, um, Adam Long, Alex Loren, Brian Harmon, Joaquin Neiman, Kevin Na, Dylan Fratelli, Bubba Watson, JT Potson, Adam Scott, Joel Dahman, Matt Wolf, Brendan Todd, Kevin Kistner, Mike Thompson, and Lewis Olson. Tied for 36 with three over. Patrick Reed, Justin Thomas, Daniel Berger, Tiger, Paul Casey, Xander Shoffley, Bryson DeChambeau, Byung Hung Nan, and Tyrell Hatton. Tied for 45th with four over Adam Hadwin, Ryan Rowenski, Jason Kokrak, Russell Henley, Gary Woodland, and Danny Lee. Oh, and um, I missed one, uh, Max Homa. Tied for 52nd with five over um, John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler, Cam Smith, Robbie Shelton, Harry English, Nick Taylor, Matt Kuchar. Charles Howell the third, um, tied for 60th with six over. Um, Jason Day, Colin Mariqua, Taylor Gooch among notables. Um, tied for 65th with seven over. Um, the notable there is Sun JM. Cam Champs in 68th with nine over, and in the bottom with 10 over is Mark Leishman. Now I'm going to make predictions for the NASCAR races. This weekend, they, I believe, are being held in Richmond this weekend. Um, let's see. Oh, they're in Daytona. Or no, not Daytona. Um. Let's see if the trucks are going. Oh, it is it is um Daytona, it looks like. Um but I'm looking for uh um who's actually racing this weekend. So, Xfinity's tonight. Oh, the trucks are at um, Gateway Motorsports Park this week. I know that on Sunday. And then we'll start the Xfinity starting lineup from Daytona because that race is tonight. I like to go in uh, chronological order with the NASCAR races. Um, 
Yeah, so they're at Daytona. I was right. It's a night race tonight in Daytona. Um, Chase Briscoe, Ross Chase, and Austin Sindrick, Renoa Grags, and Justin Allinger, Brandon Jones, Jed Burton, and Michael Annette, Justin Haley, Riley Herbst, Harrison Burton, Brett Moffitt, Anthony Alfredo, Ryan Sieg, Brandon Brown, Jeremy Clements, Alex Lab, Tommy Joe Martins, Myatt Snyder, Josh Williams, Jesse Little, Joe Graff Jr., BJ McQuaid, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Chad Fincham, Colby Howard, Cody Vanderwall, Gary Godling, Matt Mills, Vinny Miller, Timmy Hill, um, Cesar Barcella, Joey Gase, AJ Allmendinger, Mike Harmon, Timothy Vaines, and Josh Jackson. Um, Briscoe won last week. This week? Hmm. How about... Um... Oh, we don't have any, um... Oh, here we go. Um, Noah Gragson, 7-1. I think that's a good uh, play here. Um, I think Gragson should be among the favorites with Briscoe and Chaston at, like, say, 6-1. So give me Noah Gragson to win the um, the Wawa 250 tonight down in Daytona. Um, now the Cup Series starting lineup um, from Daytona on Saturday night. The Coke Zero. 400, um, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, Alaric Almarola, William Byron, Jimmy Johnson, Alec Bowman, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon, Ky- or Kurt Busch, Clint Boyer, Matt Mendetto, Cole Custer, Chris Boucher, Tyler Riddick, Matt Kenseth, Eric Jones, Bubba Wallace, Ryan Newman, Chris Bell, John Hunter Nemechek, Corey LaJoy, Michael McDowell, Chase Elliott, Ryan Priest, Ty Dillon, Daniel Suarez, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Brendan Poole, J.J. Yilly, Quinn Half, Timmy Hill, Ross Chase, and Joey Gase. Um, Josh Baliki and Brendan Gogman. So, something I just realized is that Newman's first race at Daytona since his accident in February. So that's a subplot that um, will be um, talked about for sure on the broadcast. But in terms of a pick here, I am going to go... With Ryan Blaney, 12-1 to to win this race. Blaney's had some good history at Daytona. Um, I think he's due. So give me Ryan Blaney, 12-1 to on Saturday night to win the Coke Zero um, 400. And then um, now the uh, Truck Series race on Sunday. At Gateway, I thought that they were at Daytona too, but that was, um, it looks like they're at Gateway, um, so the starting lineup for, uh, for the trucks on Sunday, Zane Smith, Brett Moffitt, Matt Crafton, Austin Hill, Brent Rhodes, Todd Gilliland, Christian X, Tyler Ankrum, Johnny Sauter, Derek Krause, Grant Effinger, Chandler Smith, Stuart Friesen, Tanner Gray, Sam Meyer, Carson Hosbar, Sheldon Creed, Ty Majeski, Raphael Lester, Spencer Davis, Austin Wayne Self, Jordan Anderson, Tate Fogelman, Spencer Boyd, Dawson Cram, Clay Greenfield, Bryant Barnhill, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Natalie Decker, Danny Bone, Tyler Hill, Kyle Donahue, Norm Benning, and Roger Roos. In terms of a pick here... I am going to go with Todd Gilliland at 25-1. to Let's go with a little bit of a long shot. I almost went Austin Hill at 8-1, but it's a little boring. Let's have some fun. I'm going to go with a, a, a mid shot here. Uh, Todd Gilliland at 25-1 to to win this race. He's a good driver. So give me Todd Gilliland to win the race on Sunday afternoon from Gateland. Before I do my best bet, I'm going to do my MLB trade deadline predictions. Um, I only have a couple trades, um, not a lot. So um, without further ado, here we go. Um, Diamondbacks trade Archie Bradley to the New York Yankees for righties. Nick Nelson, Trevor Stefan, and Frank Herman. Um, Yankees need another arm in their bullpen with the loss of Tommy Canely for the season. Zach Britton's hurt. 
Bradley's pitched well for Arizona this season, who's a, looking like to be a seller. They're one of the more disappointing teams in the league this year. So I think that they can go out and get something for Archie Bradley. Here's a bold one. The Atlanta Braves acquire Trevor Bauer from the Cincinnati Reds for outfielder Drew Waiters, right-handed pitcher Bryce Wilson, and right-handed pitcher Patrick Weevil. Um, the Reds, I think, will trade Trevor Bauer, but they will not necessarily blow it up, blow it up. I think they'll do it only because they know he's a free agent and they probably cannot afford to resign him with all the moves they made this offseason, tying up the money to Mike Moustakis and to Castellanos. Um, they get another arm in Bryce Wilson, who the Braves um, were high on once upon a time. Patrick Weagle is a guy that can help them. And then Drew Waiters can be a starting outfielder for them, potentially. The Boston Red Sox trade Nathan Avaldi to the Chicago Cubs for Corey Abbott and Tyson Miller, two righties. Um, I think Avaldi would fit well in Chicago. Um, their rotation, I think, is in good shape, but I think they can use one more arm um, in case of an injury. Jose Quintana's in the pen. I think he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. And same with John Lester. I think Nathan Avaldi will too, but I just think that they could use another arm to throw out there. So their rotation as it stands right now, Alec Mills, Kyle Hendricks, Darvish, Lester. And the case for them is that they upgrade the uh, Tyler Chatwood spot. Um, the Chicago White Sox acquire Lance Lynn from the Texas Rangers for lefty Garrett Crochet, first baseman Gavin Sheets, and righty Ian Hamilton. Um... Crochet, um, I think, is the prize here for Texas. Gavin Sheets is being blocked at that position um, right now by Jose Abreu and in the future by Andrew Vaughn. And then Ian Hamilton's a guy that um, has some promise. Um, and then Lance Lynn, um, I think the White Sox should go for it. And that would be now a formidable rotation with Lynn, Lucas Giolito, Dylan Cease, and Dallas Keuchel. That's scary. And obviously, um, no Michael Kopech this year. So um, the White Sox would then have Lynn under contract for another year after this one, too. So that would be a formidable starting five going into next year, too. The Houston Astros acquired Johnny Cueto from the San Francisco Giants for righty Jairo Solis and lefty Blake Taylor. This was a preseason trade that I copied and pasted. Johnny Cueto just feels like an Astro to me. Um, obviously an upgrade over what they currently have. Um, they're, pit, they're doing well despite have, not having Justin Verlander right now. Uh, and Cueto would be their number two starter right now without Verlander there and healthy. The New York Yankees acquired Dylan Bundy from the Los Angeles Angels for Miguel Andujar, righty Albert Abreu, and righty Michael King. So two right-handed pitchers at the same time in the big leagues this year going to the Angels. Miguel Andujar has no position on the Yankees. He'd help the Angels offensively because they need another bat. He could play DH. He could play left field. He could play third base for them. He'd be an upgrade in their lineup, even over Albert Pujols at this point at DH, potentially. So um, they finally get off of Andujar. Bundy Rental can help them uh, this year. Um, they would need a, the case for them needing a rental is um, – they have Luis Severino coming back next year, and let's say they re-sign either James Paxton or Masahiro Tanaka. And then they have Clark Schmidt coming up. Um, obviously Garrett Cole, and then they have Jordan Montgomery. So um, that's the case for them acquiring a rental. And I think that Bundy's been really good this year. Um, and I think that... He would slide in in that rotation, and he's an upgrade over Jay Happ at the back end of that rotation. I think he can be their number three or four in the postseason, depending on uh, Jordan Montgomery, obviously, and then the health of James Paxton and Masahiro Tanaka come October. Um, the San Diego Padres acquire um, Trevor Rosenthal from the Royals for lefty Adrian Morjan. Um Shortstop slash righty Jake Cronenworth and righty Jave Guerrera. Um, the Padres should be absolutely going for it. Kirby Yates out for the season. Tommy John surgery. 
Rosenthal's a good rental. Um, he's been good this year for Kansas City. I think that he is one of the best relievers on the market, and I think he'd help San Diego, and that's just a perfect fit for him, too. The San Francisco Giants trade Kevin Gossman to the Oakland Athletics for righties Brian Howard and Miguel Romero. Um, yeah, making a trade with your uh, in-state rival is rare, but I can see this happening here. The A's need some rotation help. A.J. Puke not healthy. So Gossman can slide in as a number four, number five starter for the A's. And um, that would be a good addition for them in my mind. The Tampa Bay Rays acquired Derek Holland from the Pittsburgh Pirates for righty Paul Campbell. Um, one for one trade. Um, Derek Holland can come in and uh, help them, whether it's in a starting role or a reliever role, rental. And that just feels like a classic veteran off the scrap trade that can like, turn it around a little bit. So. Um, there's my predictions for the trade deadline. Um, there's a report out just now that the Reds might be going for it, but um, we'll see. They should go for it, but at the same time, I understand why they would trade Trevor Bauer because he's in the contract year and whatnot. To me, it depends on how this weekend goes against the Cubs, and I think if they lose that series or even split, I think they trade Trevor Bauer. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And obviously... Um, we're going to have a podcast on Monday. We're probably not going to record until the afternoon after the trade deadline so we can go over all the trades and all that jazz and obviously everything from the weekend. Best bet of the day brought to you by DraftKings. Um, I'm going to go to baseball because that's really the only sport I have to go to right now because that's the only sport that's playing tonight barring more um, cancellations and protests and all that stuff. Um, so, obviously, my best bets the last two days did not happen because both those games wound up getting um, um, canceled and postponed. Um, hmm. What's a good play here? Do you know what's juicy? The over in the Washington-Boston game, nine and a half at even money. The case is that Scherzer is not great. He hasn't been that great this season, 4.31 ERA. And Chris Maz on the Red Sox rotation and pitching is just god-awful. So that's the case there. Um, Milwaukee pittsburgh over nine's intriguing. Um, Padres-Rockies... 12, that's crazy. Both those pitchers are good. I kind of like that under. Um, but the juice is on that. Um, so, I am going to go with the over in the Mariners-Angels game at 9. I feel like that's a safer bet than the Red Sox-Nats over. Because I could see a world where Scherzer, Scherzer, and the Nats win 8-1. to And that's the under. So I'm going to go over 9 Mariners Angels for my best bet of the day. That's it for the podcast. I'll be back on Monday, like I said, trade deadline and recapping everything from the weekend and looking ahead to everything on Monday as well. Hope you guys have a great weekend, everyone.